Welcome to another 3D printer update. So as you can see, it's finally printing. Now this isn't the first print. I've done quite a few before, and I meant to make a video about the first print, but I was just so excited about it working that I just kept going. So I actually have a few prints, such as this guy here. You can see in this specific print, the layer shifted, and I eventually fixed that by upping the current to the motor but otherwise it's a really smooth print. There's some banding on the bottom which I eliminated with this spool rack here so that filament can really easily unwind. Here's another print. It's very smooth but this is before I fixed some retraction issues and I think this was over extruding a little bit. As you can see there was also a layer shift. Here's the first print it's really smooth, but there's a lot of over-extrusion. It does look great, though. I was really impressed when I started printing this, and I saw how nice and smooth the little um, legs were on the octopus. Um, it's really great. It really is. And then here is the latest print. It's a Benchy, which looks really nice, but it still does have the banding. So I wouldn't consider this printer fully done and working. I don't know if it's a software problem or a hardware problem. I'm thinking what I might do to fix this is actually switch from the Light 6, the E3D Light 6 in here, to the V6 and see if that does anything. But I mean, other than the banding, this is really beautiful. There's no weird ripples where the printer accelerates. It's just really almost perfect for the resolution that it is with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 0.2 millimeter layer height. It's fantastic. So I'm really happy with this printer obviously, but if I can work out the kinks, I'll be even happier with it. So I'm printing another Benchy right now. I've just been doing a whole bunch of them. This is probably the fifth or sixth one, or seventh, uh, because I really do want to get rid of that problem and the tweaking aspect of this build is a lot of fun so that's something that I want to keep up even when I'm figuring out the best settings and and what software to use and maybe even if I should change my hot end. As you can see the motion is very smooth and it's very fast too. Uh, that's one of the great things about this open build V-Rail v -rail stuff uh, is that it's it's really solid so you can use fast accelerations with it with no problems. On the other printer, you can see it's really easy to bend the X carriage just by bending uh, or pushing on, you know, the rods here. Uh, so that's that's a big problem with it. This totally solves that problem because I mean this stuff is really rigid. I I have no problem just trying to push this stuff while it's printing. Um, so I'm very happy with that. I'll show you really quickly the extruder mount and everything that's going on here because I know that's new. Uh, here you can see I have a mount printed in silver on this machine and other than the banding it looks fantastic. Actually this area that's kind of at a 45 degree angle uh, that was printed as an overhang and it's still printed really nicely. So I have one of those small pancake steppers. I mean, that's not the correct term, but that's what a lot of people call them. Uh, they're very short for stepper motors, very flat. So they have less inertia. Um, and it's just a much better thing to have uh, if you have a geared extruder like this one, the E3D Titan. This is a great extruder, by the way. I think it's really well built and really well designed. And it seems like, you know, it's real precision components and all that stuff. It, it's very easy to use and very nice and, and well built. And the path from, um, from the actual knob thing, knurled, bleh, I don't know what it's called. But the actual path from there into the hot end um, is, is very much guided. It guides the filament pretty well. So I'm happy about that. And it works perfectly with the Light 6 as well. You can just pop in your E3D hot end and it's good to go. There's no extra mounts or anything. 
and mounting it to here was pretty easy to figure out uh, because of its orientation. So designing that mount was pretty easy. And I also integrated the um, Z-probe into that as well, into that mount. So everything's really nice and solid here. I also designed another fan shroud. This is a totally different fan shroud than the E3D one because it allows you to add two fans on either side of it for cooling the print. And so far this works surprisingly well considering it's just these two fans and no real ducts for them. I normally use these massive blower fans on here because they work really well. But so far this is working just fine and I'm really happy about that. Also here you can see we have the silicone sock on the E3D Lite 6 and it's also covered in some ceramic insulation as well as captain tape and that just helps um, make sure that the hot end temperature doesn't go down due to the airflow from the fans which would be a problem. Another thing I want to show you is a closer look at the spool holder thing here. So I printed these parts on the old machine. It's just two of these holders and this rod is from a 2D printer that I took apart and this works perfectly. It's a lot like the old one except way more convenient because you can actually pull it out to change things. And since it's only three spools and not like five wide, um, you don't get weird things happening where you're, you get the printer pulling from the edge so it, it adds a lot of friction. This is much more elegant and also if I wanted to add more spools I have another one of these rods the same exact size and I can put the spools elevated above the existing spools. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, I mean, I just changed the wiring. Not changed really, but um, I made it a lot nicer and a lot neater. As you can see, the wiring on the actual hot end and X carriage and all that is really nice. I'm really happy with this so far. I was going to make a cable chain, but this actually works perfectly. This um, spiral wrap stuff. And it works over here too. And although it might be kind of a mess up here, I'm going to change that eventually. Another thing to note, I don't think you can see it, but there's a circuit board right there and that actually uh, converts the voltage of the Z probe, which is the 24 volts from the power supply, to the logic level of the board, which is 5 volts, so that it can actually tell if the Z probe is triggered or not. Uh, that was kind of an ordeal because before I tried this method with a diode um, and a pull-up resistor and that didn't work because it didn't pull it low enough when the Z-probe went low uh, so I had to use some sort of like optical relay type thing and that works now so the leveling is great too um, it's really accurate it works perfectly and everything's except for the banding is really nice and basically perfect on this printer so I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm very proud of, of how it came out and, and I'm very impressed with the quality of it. Um, it was just a lot of fun to build and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun to upgrade and change in the future. And eventually my plan is to make it sort of modular. So instead of having cables run directly from everything here into the controller board, I, I want to actually have a connector here so that I can say one day take out the Titan extruder and the motor and put in something else or easily change out the E3D hot end and so on. So that would be really cool. Um, on top of that, the last thing I really want to say is that I made a Reddit post asking for advice about the banding here. So if you know anything about that, um, you might want to check out the details there and if you could help me out that would be really nice because I'd really like to solve this problem. Other than that, I'm so happy with this printer. And I'll just give you one last shot of some printing right there.
And I think that's really it for now. I'll be away for a couple of weeks because school is starting, so I won't have an update until then, but I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a real pleasure to make these videos for you guys.